Oh, TNA. One good thing about Fridays, or doing the show on Thursday night, is Impact is fresh in my head. <laughs> I guess that's good. I don't have to wait a day. I can, I can, I can hate it immediately. Get it out of my system. Show opened with a title, as all episodes of Impact do. The title this week, I'm not making this up. What's up with Booker? <laughs> yeah. This is a first draft that they just went with. Yeah. Joe came out with his title. A bunch of wrestlers were gathered around ringside to hear what he had to say. Just random geeks. Said he was going to offer all of them the chance of a lifetime. A Slammiversary, King of the Mountain match. He said there were slots for five men to fight for the title. He said five, did he not, Vince? The first thing he said was five men. Okay. So then he said he asked Cornette if, as the champion, he could pick the eight. Eight slots. Yeah. So he said that Cornette said fine. Cornette would pick the first four, and then he could pick the second four. So now nine men. Correct, because you presume Joe as a champion would be in there somewhere. So. There are five, eight, or nine men in this match. We don't know. We don't care. Cornette had chosen Robert Roode, James Storm, Tomko, and Matt Morgan because none of these men had ever gotten a shot at the world title. And what a shot they're getting here, by the way. Oh, yeah. A, a one in eight shot of winning a wacky reverse ladder match to win the belt. Woo! Joe said he wanted four tough-ass mothers. He was going to watch the show today, poor bastard. And next week he would tell us who these four men were. So let me repeat that. He said he was going to watch the show tonight. See, everybody did. And then next week he was going to announce his four guys. So then Booker T came out and wanted to know why he had not been chosen yet. Booker T's gimmick, I repeat, is a man who does not give a shit about TNA, clearly does not watch the show, no. doesn't have any idea what's going on. No, he, he he was angry about not being picked, even though Joe said these four names I read were picked by Jim Cornette. And that I will pick four more next week. Yes. Yeah. So, that's fine. Plays into the gimmick. So, they got an argument. Booker punched him. And then Christian and Rhino made the save. Right. Three Booker. three baby faces ran off the heel. Right. Well, no, really, because Booker T fought Joe. Joe turtled, and I, I think I heard him weeping and squealing. And then Christian and Rhino hit the ring to make the save by themselves. Yeah. Joe was just there. Yeah. He's the most impotent, neutered champion since Ray. Since CM Punk. <laughs> yeah. Me, me. Joe wins his matches, but in all his angles, he comes off like a douche. Yes. So, yes, and, and yes. Booker retreated to the top of the ramp where he pointed out, you pussies, there's three of you and one of me. Yeah. I'm going to get some backup. We'll fight later. The heel said this. Yes. The heel noted that this was not fair. No. And, and it was correct. And the fans all said, you're right. And for some reason in this mess, they all chanted TNA. Normally when the heel, when the heel says something like, this is not fair. He's lying. He's lying. Yeah. It actually is fair. If, if, for example, it were three on three and he said, this isn't fair, right. that's a heel. If Booker came to the ring with 3D to get Joe, and before they get there, Christian and Rhino came out to even the odds, and Booker would say, hey, that's not fair, that's a heel. Sure. This, Booker, was, this it, was just like, hey, there's three of you and one yes. of me, this ain't fair. Booker getting beat up by three guys and then pointing out it took three guys to beat him, not a heel. No. This show sucks. They're idiots. To the back. Frank Trigg was meeting with Kurt Angle. Borash walked up and wanted to know how the neck was. Angle was, as he was explaining it, Borash just interrupted to ask about the Angle Alliance. And Wait. <laughs> the guy's actually hurt. Yeah. His, his career-threatening injury is back. Yeah. They're playing it for comedy. Yeah. Petey Williams almost loses an eye and has not been mentioned once on TV. No. They don't care. So, Angle's then said he had an announcement for later. He said he got hurt in Korea... He said it was clear Joe was not going to pick him for the King of the Mountain match. Therefore, he was going to go out tonight and invite Karen and the kids to come back home. He was acting like he could not possibly have cared less about now being out of the world title picture. No. <laughs> Things happen. Easy come, easy go. Easy go. Who cares? And and Boras tried to ask him about AG and Tomko and what they were going through. And I, uh, No one can possibly care about that group anymore. No. There's not one single fan anywhere in the country who cares about the relationship of, of Tomko, Kurt Angle, and AJ Styles. Derek Blonde interviewed Kaz about winning the uh, X title shot on Sunday, and he basically said he would handle that later. But first things first, he had a six-man with Sanjay and Lethal, but Lethal wasn't paying attention. He said he had big things on his mind right now. Wow. This was horrible. The Blonde was horrible. Kaz was horrible. And th th this crew on TV, 
You had Jay Lethal being Black Machismo. You had Sanjay Dutt being the guru with his tambourine. And you had Kaz there in his this horrible ring jacket. Just looking like the biggest clown troop you ever saw. And then Kaz did his very wooden promo about what an honor it was to fight for the championship. Too bad you lost. And then, yes, then they talked about Jay being distracted. And Jay said he had big things in his mind. Keep in mind, this is the first time Jay Lethal has ever mentioned the big things in his mind. I am. Lethal and Dutt and Kaz against Rock and Rave and Johnny Devine. It was actually a really fun match while it lasted. Heat on Lethal. Uh, there was an awesome SOS slam by uh, Hoyt where Lethal did like a full spin in the air and Guru made the hot tag. And then also out of nowhere, Kaz just pinned Hoyt with a one-legged drop kick. <laughs> totally out of nowhere. Done. Yeah. Take it home. Okay. So it was fun while it lasted. Lethal grabbed the mic and, and called Val into the ring. Got the ring out of his fanny pack and got it on his knee and said, Will you marry me? They completely ripped yes. off Randy Savage and Liz. For those of you who are under the age of 15, this is exactly the delivery. This is perfect. Yes. Right When Randy Savage proposed to Liz in the middle of the ring. Yes. For everybody else, what the fuck's going on? But that's fine. So, anyway, apparently they're getting married at Slammiversary and Sanjay is pissed. Yes, yeah, Sanjay was in the back seething. And uh, to their credit, the announcers never mentioned this. It was perfectly clear Sanjay was pissed. We didn't need Mike Tenney and Don West to say, look at Dutt, look at Sanjay Dutt. He's angry. They just yeah. let it be. So that's good. We got mysterious footage of Abyss. They had put up some curtains and acted like he was in a padded room or something. It looks so low rent. I mean, this is a fucking nationally televised program on Spike TV, and they spent a three bucks on this set at <laughs> Linens and Things. So bad. I think the straight jacket we used in Household Charlie really became Vinny V. may have been better. It may actually have been. He said he committed himself because he was an addict and a masochist. No matter how much blood or torture, it was never enough. Said so doctors told him he could go home soon, and then they immediately cut away. Like, okay. immediately. Yeah. And never talked about it again, by the way. No. Okay, so first thing he says is there's a video. It's a shot of Abyss sitting against the padded wall, and he's in a straight jacket, and you can't see his face. It's obscured in shadow, but he's growling his promo, and he says they let him cut a promo for good behavior. And the next thing he says is, I think I fooled them. So hopefully his doctors don't watch this promo, or they'll know he's worked them. Next thing you know, there's all kinds of video effects and, and trick camera shots and whatnot. So apparently they give Abyss not only a video camera, but editing equipment. They give him his own truck to play with while he's in this, in this asylum. And that's what he did. The blonde interviewed Nash and Joe. They're friends again, everybody. They were friends on TV last week. They wanted to kill each other at the pay-per-view, and now they're friends again. It was just a misunderstanding. Who could care? Just a misunderstanding, everybody. Just Fat Joe and old Kevin. And so Nash is talking about how he thinks that wrestling is 90% mental and 10% physical. That's for goddamn sure. I, that 10% may be pretty, may be pretty high. And Joe felt You're it giving was yourself too much credit. 90% physical and 10% mental. And they're friends now, and all of a sudden Joe just started talking about Booker. I don't know. Don't know, don't care. This show is so poorly written. It's just like, i got to ask, uh, tomorrow on, on Figure Four Daily, Alex Greenfield is going to be on the show. Who's he? Writer for WWE till about a year ago, works in Hollywood. I'm going to ask him if, if you'd ever see a show this poor get greenlit. It just would never happen. It would never happen. I hope he watches him, Patrick. He knows what you're talking about. Oh, he will. And we had uh, Awesome Kong against Gail Kim for the women's title. So for the second month in a row, they put the fight for the title shot on the pay-per-view, and the title shot itself is given away for free on Impact. Yeah. And, and just and disappears. For a one, I'm sure. So there you go. They uh, And by the way, it was 39 minutes into the show, not even the top of the hour, not the end of the show, nothing like that. Just a match, you know, just a match. So it was a great match while it lasted. Gail went crazy at the bell. He... Did a bunch of stuff. All the girls came out to watch. Uh, Gail made a big comeback and tons of near falls, and the place was going crazy, and it was all great and exciting and everything like that. And and then uh, Raisha tried to interfere, and ODB pulled her off the apron. All the girls got into battle royal. Raisha was, or the ref was distracted. Angelina tossed Gail off the top. Gail sold it like she'd blown out her knee. And then Kong killed her with an awesome bomb for the pin. So uh, great TV match. Uh, they showed the power bomb about ten times from ten different angles, and uh, they all looked lethal. 
Gail sold her knee all the way to the backstage area. They sent out geeks to uh, take care of her. and This was great. This was a great TNA segment, the best segment on the show. Hell and yeah. why they did not end the show with this, I have no idea, because it was all downhill from here. Yeah, um, this was a really good match. They did not go to commercial in the middle of it. They just let it go. The heat was insane, and it wasn't the usual TNA uh, fan heat of, hey, this is the part where we chant TNA or chant this is awesome or, or chant things. It was actual emotion, actual passion from enjoyment and, and pleasure of what they were watching, so that's good. There was a point early on where Gail went for a run and botched it, which is, you know, whatever, big deal. But this show was taped at least two days ago or maybe more than a week ago, and they didn't take the time to edit that out. Of course not. <laughs> they just don't care. No. Maybe, the, maybe the, they don't even know. Maybe they thought, they thought that was what it was supposed to look like. I cannot complain, though. i got to give a thumbs up to this segment. It was great. That's true. So there you go. Your phone's making noises. It is. Then we had a uh, video package of the Kurt Karen soap opera. The good news is that the they're playing these... Video packages. We're actually getting recaps and shit. Bad news is the Kurt Karen angle's been going on for what now? A year? Six months? All, all I know is when the thing started, I screamed because I did not wa- want to watch. I don't want to watch Kurt and Karen angle ever again. Let alone a recap of their best moments. But we got to give them credit for doing a recap. Yes, it is. It's true. They, they aired one here. They aired one for Gale and Kong. They aired one for Abyss. Bad so, news is this recap was about ten seconds long. Well, can't win them all. Then we had something. I don't even know what happened here. I don't know if it's my fault. It was not my it fault. It was not your fault. I don't know if it was the, the, the cable company's fault or if this happened all over the country. But Kurt Angle came out. He had balloons. And he had a, an apology letter that he wanted to read for Karen. And uh, it was fucking awesome. Now, you have, to, you have to accept that Kurt Angle is a fucking idiot. He's, his character is just a total geek. He's no longer a badass. He's a comedy figure. In fact, admittedly, he is now a mid-carder because Joe's not going to choose him for the title match. If you expect, if you accept that he's a comedy geek mid-carder, this was fantastic comedy. Mm-hmm. If you want him to draw you any money, this was an utter failure. But that's TNA for you. He basically uh, said he did not kick Karen out. She left him. He said he knew she was at her mom's house, and he knew how miserable her life must be without him. said he was going to give her the opportunity to come back to him where he belonged. said he had neglected her in the past, but it was all about her getting her priorities straight. He said it was TNA title first, gold medal second, the kids third, and her fourth. And uh, she needed to uh, understand that, and then everything would be all right. He said he was wearing his best suit, and he'd gotten some stupid balloons. I even bought these stupid balloons, he said. It wasn't a romantic type. That was for wussies. He said he took the time to write this speech, and now the ball was in her court to make up for her mistakes, or, as a nicer way to put it, her failures as a wife. Yes. He said it took a real man of his stature to do this. He hoped she appreciated it. All he was asking was that she show up next week, and literally, as he said, next week, we were in the middle of a commercial. A Jack in the Boss commercial. I have no idea what happened. Apparently next week, Kurt and Karen are going to have a barbecue Jack. I, I hope that this <laughs> I hope this was a to-the-back TNA moment, and they're just fucking retarded. Or or uh, Comcast screwed up. Somebody screwed up, and it was not my fault this time. No, we actually thought maybe the channel changed during the recording or something. No, they they came back when the commercials ended. It was impact again, and they made no mention of what Kurt Angle said. Yeah, no buys. So then we had uh, ba, ba, ba. LAX and Hector. LAX and Hector having their big celebration. It was fine. There were a lot of of boobies bouncing all over the place. Yes, uh, Hector chastised Borash for staring at Selena's breasts. And Selena was appalled and covered up the cubic yard of flesh, which she exposes on every appearance. Yes. It apparently occurred to her someone may be ogling her. Yeah, she's just too modest. She's a prude. So that was exciting. We had LAX versus the Machine Guns for the tag team titles. It was a good match, fun match. Guns got the heat. Hernandez made the hot tag. Tanae said that Don Wetz had been calling Hernandez Super Max for years. Years, he said. This may have been my fault. <laughs> I just noticed this Sunday. Is it just me? It's years, he said. It's much closer to Sunday than it is years. It's been a month or two. Broke down into a four-way homicide, hit the ace crusher off Hernandez's shoulders for the pin. Thumbs up segment. Yeah, everything about this was, was great. Uh, this is the, the program that if it was up to me, these guys would be feuding for the tag team titles, as it is. One's the champion, one is jobbers. But they, they, did not, they did not bury them here. It was a very competitive match. They got to do all their stuff. They got to look awesome. And then they got beat by the tag team champions with a finisher. 
Fine. This was thumbs up. Are we done? No, go ahead. Oh, all right. Usually you keep going. There was an interview, a promo with Booker T and uh, Team 3D. Booker said that Christian Cage and Rhino disrespected him, and I have no idea what they did to disrespect him or when it would have been. Apparently it's sometime between when Booker was announced as Robert Roos' partner and when Christian and Rhino beat him. Perhaps that was a sign of disrespect was to wrestle him. He disrespected them by beating them up after the match. No, he, he said they disrespected him. Oh. I don't know when this happened. I don't either now that I think about it. And then Devon talked for a while. Bubba was silent this time when Devon, Devon got to speak. He did fine. He said he was doing uh, he was doing Cage and Joe and Rhino a favor because he got them a match with Booker T, and now they'd be having a match with royalty because nothing matters more in TNA than what you've done somewhere else. Yeah. JB, uh, then we had Eric Young in Memphis looking for Elvis. This sucked. He was in the woods. He got a ride from a man in a Dr. Wagner mask, I believe. It took him four days to get to Memphis. It was horrible. No buys. Literally no buys. Today did a pre tape promo sting, and as always, he said, this will be a side of the icon we've never seen before. It was an interview about his career. <laughs> okay. This may have actually literally been a repeat. I swear to God, when Sting joined TNA the first time, they did an interview just like this. Well, Sting, without his makeup, in street clothes, with sunglasses, talking about life, recapping his career. And the, the two key things he is here, he said, were the only promoter who would give him a chance was Jerry Jarrett. Yeah. And he had a tag team partner who was the ultimate warrior. They had a breakup, and it was not a, it was not a friendly breakup. And then it, that was the end. This was actually great for the one minute that it occurred. The best part was when he noted <laughs> it was Rock. That was Warrior's name. Yes. He claimed he was the first Rock, which, of course, is incorrect. But uh, it was Rock and then uh, Flash Borden. Yes. I had heard Flash. I knew it was the Blade Runners Rock and Flash. I did not know it was Flash Borden. I never laughed so hard as I did when I heard Flash Borden. We need a new Flash Borden. His son, Sting's son, needs to come back as Flash, Flash Borden. Flash Borden. And the blonde interviewed Angelina and Velvet, the most comically horrendous television you've ever seen. The blonde said, I've got to step away from being a professional here and voice my opinion. She was appalled that they had made fun of Roxy. They'd been so mean to her. They got into a huge bitchy argument. The bad girl threatened to shave her bald. And uh, and that was that. Just hideous. <laughs> horrible. Hideous. Horrible acting by all three of them. This this should never have aired. I don't know why. It's not live. It's not that they didn't have a chance to say, you know what? This is bad. Let's air another Slammiversary promo instead. No. no, they put this on TV. Let's have Velvet Sky seeing b and <laughs> other assorted atrocities. No good. Vince, your atrocities are worse in that uh, perspective. I'm not a national TV. Well, I'm on this wacky internet show. Velvet and Angelina against Roxy and ODB. Actually, did, since you brought it up, I wasn't going to let it slide, but yes, when Velvet Sky said Biatch, my first thought was, wow, that must be how everyone else feels when I say True Dash. Yes. <laughs> the same thing. I'll try to avoid it. You need to apologize to everybody for that. I apologize for... No, I'm not going to apologize for being myself. I will try to make a change. Roxy is no longer a voodoo chick. She has now stolen Ashley's weird-ass rocker gimmick, and God bless her, but she needs some hair now. This look does not work. Even as a voodoo chick, I thought, that's a pretty girl. Now, she's a bald girl with a big wound on the top of her head. People are going to get mad, but she looks like a neo-Nazi. Well, yeah. It's just... She looks like a skinhead. They save their heads. It's not working. It, it won't and last forever. with the exception of Angelina, everybody in this match fucking sucked. Yes. I always... Uh, Roxy's always been pretty damn good. She was horrible tonight. ODB's been fine. ODB was horrible. She was... ODB was out there doing drop kicks to the knee. And I don't mean the lucha spot where you throw a drop kick to someone's knee. She was aiming for the head or chest area and hitting them in the knee. Velvet actually was just as bad as always, so that may have been an improvement. Sure. And, Angelina uh, was fine. Yeah. We we had uh, Angelina booting ODB in the breasts into a sunset flip by Velvet for the pin. So ODB pinned by Velvet Sky. Clean. Yes. How her star has fallen. <laughs> she is no longer the next whatever. Jesus. But, yeah, this is this is bad in every way. We had a Christian and Rhino promo. Christian called Booker a piece of shit. And then we had the greatest moment in the history of, of Impact. <laughs> 
Rhino grabbed the mic and he was cutting this angry promo. But as he grabbed the mic, the generic blonde had a death grip on it. He tried to snatch it from her, but she just wouldn't let go for real. Rhino was not strong enough to pull this microphone away. No. And and finally, he kept pulling and pulling, and she wouldn't let go. And he finally turned to her, and he said, and I quote, let go of the microphone, honey. <laughs> he was very polite, but very firm. Yes. <laughs> she needed to let go of this right now. We laughed. We howled. We played it over and over again. It got better every time. Why do wrestling companies hire people that have no fucking idea what they're doing? And, and then give them no instruction. And can't do their job. It's not like she was bad for a week and has been slowly improving. No. she's uh, She started at zero and is now at zero. Oh, God. It just amazes me. It just amazes me. So then we had Rhino, Christian, and Joe versus Team 3D and Booker T. Pretty fun match right here. Rhino, uh, heat on him, and then he hit a big-ass spine buster on Bubba in his generous midsection, as Tanae explained it. That means large gut. Joe made the hot tag, six-way. And then all of a sudden, in the middle of the six-way, Joe just pinned Devon Dudley with a power slam. <laughs> just power slammed him like he does in every match, and this time Devon did not have the power to lift a shoulder up. Oh. I don't know. You never guess. It was fine. They, they, they did a lot of crowd brawling, but it was a... Fun, intense six-man tag. The rest of the thing on the show is mostly okay. Yeah. With the exception of that women's tag match was blue. But it, it was it was fine. And it then we had the great finish. angle. Oh, the yeah. great angle. Team 3D went and grabbed uh, Hector Guerrero. I guess mad because LAX won, and, and Hector, I guess, in some way, I don't know what he He's did. their manager. Didn't he turn somebody over? Was that in their match? That was AJ Styles. I don't remember. But uh, he's also one of these Spanish broadcasters. He's doing sure. double duty. So they beat him up, and they beat him up. And they beat him up. And I sat there and I thought, where the fuck are the three baby faces I just saw in the ring who had just won this match? They cut to a shot and they were standing there oblivious. They didn't see the the uh, near riot in the crowd as, as the three giant men beat up Hector Guerrero. Mm-hmm. So finally they started to go and the announcers claimed Booker, all by himself, was holding off all three men with one steel chair. Yeah. There's apparently no other chairs in the impact zone. No, just the one. Booker got it. The three the three baby faces could not grab chairs and, and make the save for the, the their Mexican friend. So finally the heels ran off into the night and left Hector a bloody mess and, and then I had another thought. Where the fuck was <laughs> LAX? Where were Hernandez and Homicide and Salinas? This man was being beaten unmercifully and nobody was there to make the save for him. Not only was he being beaten unmercifully, he was being beaten unmercifully, unmercifully first at the announce desk, then they threw him over into a wall, and then they threw him right underneath the giant LAX banner. Yes. They were in their casa. Yeah. <laughs> they never showed up. This was dumb. I've seen dumber shows. I've got to give this show. I can't hate the show. No. There, I, there's I, too I, much good wrestling. I, uh, had, I had fun watching it, and most of the bad stuff was funny bad. You know, it's, it's it's actually this should tell you everything you need to know. The women's match was fucking awesome with 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 Kong and Gale. Uh, there were at least two other matches that I gave two thumbs up to, and still as a whole, I give this show a thumbs in the middle. That should tell you how awful everything else was on this program. Pretty much. God. Pretty much.